a little bit about uh, New Japan. I mean, these days everyone really keeps up with with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I mean, going back to the Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho era, uh, a lot of American fans started really paying attention to it. But it was actually born in '72. I mean, the it's a spinoff, if you will, of All Japan Pro Wrestling, and mm-hmm. You know, 72 is really getting going when you're getting going in wrestling. What was your first memory or recollection of new Japan and the reputation represent reputation that had relative to all Japan? Um, the reputation he had was of being just a really good businessman and people liked him as they liked Baba. Um, so, um. I, I don't, you know, I would just, did, I didn't see any real heat between those two guys. I never heard, of course, I wasn't around them enough personally, but I never heard them speak badly of each other. It just, it created a, a tremendous atmosphere for wrestling. I mean, and like, instead of building off that, then it became harder and harder to get TV, then they fought over TV. And, you know, we've even WWE has been unsuccessful to, unless something happened in the last year. To strike a deal with the TV over there. It's very difficult to get TV. And that's what basically, you know, ended up hurting both of them. It's, uh, it's crazy to think about, you know, these giants in pro wrestling and all that they contributed, but you mentioned a name a minute ago, uh, you know, we've all heard giant Baba. We've all heard Antonio Inoki, but Ricky Dozan, boy, he's like the, the legend of all legends in Japan. How big of a shadow does he cast over pro wrestling, at least during your experience in Japan? Anoki? Ricky Dozan. Oh, God. When I first got over there, that's all you heard about was Ricky Dozan. You know how he died, right? I, I heard, and again, this is rumor. He would he- carry $2 million around with him in, in U.S. currency and had, and had it handcuffed to him. And they followed him into the bathroom, killed him in the bathroom of a restaurant. It was cut like, off his wrist or rather than the cut off his wrist or cut off the the bracelet and took the money. He was a full fledged gangster. Okay. As I'm as I've been led to, to understand. You know, I mean you've you've seen those movies like um Purple Rain and that where they there actually is a uh you know, as there is in society everywhere, there are, you know, powerful people that probably aren't the most honest. Um, you know, we call them gangsters over here, or the mob, or whatever. It exists in Japan too, as it does everywhere. Uh, it looks like um, there was a stabbing incident. I, I guess is what I had heard, and and quick little Google search here. Yeah, with your Mister Ricky Dozan. Uh, t- talk to me a little bit about Giant Baba. You know, this is a guy who. You know, we know as uh, maybe due to the politics, a former NWA World Heavyweight Champion, even for a cup of coffee. Uh, but y- you had to have a ton of interaction with all Japan and Baba family. I did. Yeah, talk me through that. Well, I even knew, I even knew Matoka real well. They they, they kind of ran that business together. With Matoka was his wife, and of course, while I was there, um, everybody from Dory and Terry booked uh, for them. And then eventually, uh, that's where John Laurinaitis made his money, and, and a lot of it. John took over the book uh, and booked it and, uh, for Baba for, God, I would say 10, 12 years. 